There's new reaction tonight to the Kyrie Irving controversy and his tweet promoting an anti-Semitic documentary. LeBron James weighed in, saying he doesn't respect the hurt his former teammate has caused. And there's no place in his world for it. No one can, can benefit from that. You know, what Kyrie did um, caused some harm to a lot of people. There has not been a more polarizing human being in the NBA over the past four or five years than Kyrie Irving. And I don't think there's been a better example of such a thing than the most recent incident that he's gone through. And then following following that, the punishments that he is dealing with. And everyone has a separate opinion about it. I mean, you have some people that are saying that what he did wasn't that big of a deal and he should be let go. And then at the same time, you're having people saying that what he did is horrible and he should be punished for it. So now that the punishments were levied against him and all of the tasks that he needs to achieve in order to be reinstated in the NBA has officially been announced, I figured now would be an appropriate time to discuss whether or not this is all necessary and why he is dealing with what he is dealing with. So before we get to the content, these videos are a little bit more controversial than others. They get a little bit more dislikes than others, which it's all good. I take pride in trying to discuss sensitive topics where we might disagree on things. And I hope that we could discuss these things respectfully and maturely in the comment section down below. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Boys, it's time for us to have a little talk. I'm proud of you for hitting the shower every day, especially after the gym, but you're not getting the job done right unless if you're using the proper products in the shower. Yes, unfortunately, that plastic bottle of body wash with 60 plus ingredients, sulfites, and chlorides isn't getting the job done. Unless if your goal is to make your skin flaky, dry, and cause more rashes throughout the day, while also starting to smell like crap shortly after you shower, which is why I partnered with Dr. Squatch. Dr. Squatch is changing the personal care game with high quality natural ingredients in their soaps, shampoos, and deodorant. Most of their soaps have this like nice, natural, woody type smell to it. My personal favorite is the Alpine Sage, but they are really known for their pine tar soap. And not only does it smell good, but the oils are great for hydrating your skin, exfoliating your skin, and will leave you feeling good and fresh to take on the day. Their ingredients are placed on all of the soaps that they sell. And literally it's just oil, shea butter, and sea salt. But they make more than just shower soaps, bro. As a person that used to have super long hair, I'll tell you the number one thing that's gonna screw your hair over is using shampoos with sulfates and parabens in them. And Dr. Squatch not only has good smelling shampoos, but it's also sulfate free and paraben free on top of smelling fantastic. But it doesn't stop there. I really hope you're not using deodorant with aluminum in it because there's studies that indicate that could result in skin cancer down the future, which is why I highly recommend Dr. Squatch's Alpine Sage deodorant. It literally says on the back of this deodorant, what natural product does which. Like this one has charcoal for odor protection, arrowroot for moisture absorption, and probiotics to restore your balance. I feel way better and way more comfortable using these products knowing that I'm taking care of my skin for the long term while also smelling great and like a man. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat. New customers could save 20% off on orders of $20 or more when they use my promo code DSQ Flight Mike. That's DSQ Flight Mike to save 20% on an order of $20 or more. And thank you, Dr. Squatch for the sponsorship. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Kyrie Irving has had a very interesting five years in his career. Starting all the way back to the end of the 2016 NBA season, where this man hit a legacy defining shot for LeBron James. I mean, if you thought Ray Allen's three against the San Antonio Spurs was legacy defining for LeBron, this jump shot that Kyrie Irving hit to seal the three to one series comeback for the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Golden State Warriors did wonders for LeBron James's legacy. I mean, you came back down three to one against the best team in NBA history, or at least the team that had the best regular season record in NBA history. Following that, Kyrie Irving tried to run it back with LeBron James. After losing to the Golden State Warriors, now with Kevin Durant in the 2017 NBA Finals, Kyrie Irving demanded to trade that offseason. There were multiple rumors as to why he would demand such a trade. I mean, 
between one being the fact that Bron James was rumored to leave soon and two being maybe Kyrie Irving wants to have his own team now. Regardless, he got traded to a team that has the most storied franchise in the NBA, or at least one of the most storied franchises in the NBA. A team that if you're in basketball, you definitely want to be a franchise cornerstone for. And not only was he a franchise cornerstone, but it's a team that is rebuilding while competing at the same time. This is literally what he wanted. He wanted to be the captain and the face of a franchise. And he had younger people that could look up to him as a leader that respected him, that still respect him. And after two seasons with the Boston Celtics, including his first season where the team was so freaking good that they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals game seven without him, one year later, Kyrie Irving decided to join the Brooklyn Nets, citing that he just wanted to go home and he wanted to team up with Kevin Durant. In year one, he dealt with injury issues and I honestly don't blame him because if there was a time to deal with your injury problems because he had an optional surgery back then that he decided to take, it would have been year one because Kevin Durant wasn't around. In year two, both KD and Kyrie decided that, hey, Kenny Atkinson wasn't the guy for the job and the Nets fired him in favor for Steve Nash. In the middle of the season, the Brooklyn Nets gutted out their entire roster to trade for James Harden. But also in year two, Kyrie Irving was getting this reputation as a part-time basketball player. I mean, he was taking a lot of time off, not even for injury reasons, just personal time off. And then in year three, you had the vaccine drama between Kyrie Irving and the NBA and his own team. James Harden demands a trade partially because of the drama that the Brooklyn Nets were dealing with. And in the offseason, Kyrie Irving was rumored to opt out of his contract and potentially sign with a different team before opting in for one more season with the Brooklyn Nets. Until the most recent drama happened where he promoted an anti-Semitic film. Now, this is before I even mention the fact that the Brooklyn Nets got off to a horrific start with Kyrie Irving, fired their head coach, Steve Nash, who honestly, man, I don't blame him because the guy had to deal with so much crap. I'm actually happy for him at this point, but as a result of the anti-Semitic film that he promoted, the NBA came down hard on Kyrie Irving. I mean, really, really hard. And look, I don't expect a lot of you guys to understand because I am Jewish. I do see these things. I do follow these things. But there has been a recent rise in anti-Semitism in the United States. So as a result, it seems like society is significantly more sensitive to anti-Semitism currently, which honestly, I'm happy for, man. I've seen way too many Jewish people getting mugged, way too many of them getting murdered. And at the end of the day, I think my stance is just love each and every human being, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of gender, regardless of any of that stuff. Because at the end of the day, we're all different in some ways, but at the end of the day, we're all human. But as a result of Kyrie Irving's comments, the Brooklyn Nets suspended him. The suspension came a week ago and the statement was pretty much as a result of Kyrie Irving not taking the opportunity to apologize earlier on and just playing smart with the media when they asked him if he had anti-Semitic beliefs or if he wanted to apologize. The Nets said that over the last several days, we have made repeated attempts to work with Kyrie Irving to help him understand the harm and danger of his words and actions, which began with him publicizing a film containing deeply disturbing anti-Semitic hate. We believe that taking the path of education in this challenging situation would be the right one and thought that we had made progress with our joint commitment to eradicating hate and intolerance. We were dismayed today when given an opportunity in a media session that Kyrie Irving refused to unequivocally say he has no anti-Semitic beliefs nor acknowledge specific hateful material in the film. This was not the first time he had the opportunity but failed to clarify. Such failure to disavow anti-Semitism when given a clear opportunity to do so is deeply disturbing and is against the values of our organization and constitutes conduct detrimental to the team. Accordingly, we are of the view that he is currently unfit to be associated with the Brooklyn Nets. We have decided that Kyrie will serve a suspension without pay until he satisfies a series of objective remedial measures that address the harmful impact of his conduct and the suspension period served is no less than five games. And look, man, a lot of people said that, hey, he just posted something onto his social media. Why is it a big deal? When you have the following that Kyrie Irving has, if you're posting an anti-Semitic film onto your social media, this is the type of power you have. According to Google Trends, a very irrelevant film came very relevant as a result of Kyrie Irving. People have started to see this film more. There's theaters that show this film more. And the issue is that it spreads hatred towards one particular community. Now, as a result, Kyrie Irving has like a series of things that he must do in order to be reinstated with the Brooklyn Nets. So far, he's already met with Adam Silver and had a very productive conversation with 
them. On top of the quest that he needs to go on, which really seems like an NBA 2K23 My Career quest, Kyrie Irving also lost his sponsorship with Nike. Now, these aren't as similar as you think. There's a gigantic difference between him losing his Nike sponsorship and Nike no longer releasing the Kyries and the fact that the Nets have him going on a gigantic quest in order for them to reinstate him. And honestly, I'm gonna be honest, it took me a while, but I think I got to a point where I could actually come in front of you and be unbiased while also integrating little bits of my culture so you guys could see it from my side as well. As always, I hope we could have a respectful conversation about this, but bear in mind, Nike and the Nets, two different things, two separate situations. In Nike's situation, they suspended their relationship with Kyrie about a week ago, saying that they're no longer launching the Kyrie Aids. The people that made Uncle Drew, Uncle Drew are officially out of the Uncle Drew business. Nike said that at Nike, we believe there is no place for hate speech and we condemn any form of anti-Semitism. We are deeply saddened and disappointed by the situation and its impact on everyone. Yeah, I don't know how important Kyrie was to Nike's bottom line. I mean, I'm sure it's not as important as LeBron, but it's never fun to lose an individual that you're endorsing. On top of that, from Kyrie's angle, this sucks. This is a gigantic revenue stream that he's gonna miss out on, but Kyrie makes a ton of money, so I'm sure he's not gonna go broke as a result of this. Now, later on, Phil Knight told CNBC that they don't think they're ever going to go back to Kyrie. I mean, they said he made some statements that we just can't abide by, and that's why we ended our relationship. And I was fine by that. A lot of people People think this is a punishment. I mean, I've seen so many memes about the alleged Nike sweatshop as a result of this. So I'm here to just tell you there's a gigantic difference between what Nike is doing and what the Nets are doing. You see, what Nike is doing here is they're severing ties with a very controversial human being that could affect their bottom line. To be frank, man, if Adidas severed their ties with Kanye West, who Kanye West was super important to Adidas' bottom line, I mean, I don't even want to imagine the the amount of money Adidas is losing by cutting ties with Kanye West. But in the case with Kyrie Irving, it's kind of a no-brainer. Here's the thing that I'm sure some of you don't understand, which I'll explain to you. The best parallel I could draw is as a YouTuber. On YouTube, there are times where I will present myself in a video and say, hey, this video might get demonetized. I actually pride myself on covering the more edgier topics because I feel like it makes me less of a sellout and not as cookie cutter as other news outlets. And I also think it's a good challenge for myself, which is why I make in my third Kyrie video, despite me losing a healthy amount of subscribers from the other Kyrie videos that I've made. You see, when a video gets demonetized, they don't say, yo, hurt the dirt, your video got demonetized. YouTube sends you an email saying, your video was deemed to be not advertiser friendly. Meaning advertisers don't want to promote their product on something that's controversial, something that promotes hate speech, something that has a lot of violence in it. Anything of that nature is deemed not brand friendly. And the reason they do that is someone could be upset about the fact that the brand is behind someone doing some questionable and controversial things. And that's just how business works. It's how it works for me too. There are times where I'll turn down a sponsor because I don't want my brand to be associated with that sponsor. And there are instances where sponsors won't work with YouTubers because they deem those YouTubers to not be brand friendly enough. It's a business thing. And in this instance, man, it doesn't really take a genius to figure this out. When Kyrie Irving is out there promoting an anti-Semitic film, obviously that isn't the most brand friendly thing. So as a result, he may lose sponsors. I mean, you've seen situations like this in the past. I mean, when Tiger Woods had his incident, he lost a ton of sponsorships. When Michael Vick went to jail, he lost a ton of his sponsorships. Aaron Rodgers lost sponsorships because of his perception on vaccines and for quote unquote spreading misinformation, which I'll leave for you guys to interpret honestly. I don't want to get into people's vaccine stances and whatnot. So in this instance, Nike just looked at Kyrie and said, this man's not necessarily an asset. He's a bit of a liability. He's a little unpredictable and very volatile. And this is just the straw that broke the camel's back, which is why they severed ties with Kyrie. It's not a punishment. A lot of people think that Nike 
Nike is punishing Kyrie Irving for speaking the truth. It's not that. It's that he's not brand friendly. You can't do this stuff. It's why Andrew Tate got deplatformed. It's why Sneeko got deplatformed. It's why Leafy is here got banned from YouTube. They're not advertiser friendly. And at the end of the day, YouTube is a business. Nike is a business. And if you're not helping their business, they're not going to pay you money to represent their business. It's that simple. But I will admit the Brooklyn Nets quest for Kyrie is a little different. So LeBron actually tweeted about this. We're going to get to that as well. For those of you guys that don't know the quest that Kyrie Irving's on, no, it's not running around the city with the hot dog on his head. Let me know if you got that one. But the Nets have delivered Kyrie Irving six items that he must complete to return to the team. The first is apologize and condemn the movie. The second is a 500k donation to anti-hate causes. The third is sensitivity training. The fourth is anti-Semitic training. The fifth is meet with the ADL and Jewish leaders. And the sixth is meet with Joe Tsai to demonstrate understanding. Here's the thing. A lot of people are misinterpreting this as stuff that Kyrie Irving needs to do to return to the Nets. And I want you to understand before you even get to the analysis of this, the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving have had the most tumultuous relationship and the worst history with one another. I mean, we've said it in the summer, man. Imagine if you're the Brooklyn Nets, you paid Kyrie Irving a max contract to come to your team. You gutted out your team. You, tr you traded a very promising core in Jarrett Allen and D'Angelo Russell and Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie. You fired Kenny Atkinson, who's a pretty solid head coach. Kyrie Irving played more games during his tenure with the Boston Celtics than he did with the Brooklyn Nets. At a specific point, the Nets are probably fed up with Kyrie Irving. I don't blame them. If I'm paying Kyrie Irving max contract money and I'm dealing with him taking time off for personal reasons, him getting into it with the government and my own team over vaccination, which I respect and that I understand, him demanding a max contract over this past off season despite him barely playing in games, him getting injured in year one, him making demands out of the team and then not delivering. And then of course, the more recent promotion of an anti-Semitic film at a specific point, man, they're definitely going to be fed up and they've been fed up. You've heard Sean Mark say multiple times that the Brooklyn Nets may move on from Kyrie Irving. I mean, multiple times in the off season and even last year. This is something that I've made videos on consistently. The Nets consistently threaten Kyrie that they're going to move on from him. So you need to keep that in mind when you look at this gigantic quest that they put Kyrie Irving on. Is it a bit unnecessary? Maybe, but at the same time, the Nets are probably sick of Kyrie Irving's antics. The first two things Kyrie Irving's already done. He's apologized and condemned the movie the moment he got suspended. He donated $500,000 to anti-hate causes as well. Sensitivity training is something that most employees go through. And in this instance, I think it's something that could help him out. Same with the anti-Semitic training. I think it's very appropriate for this instance. The fifth thing is meeting with the ADL and Jewish leaders. I think that has more to do with the fact that he's in New York. The largest Jewish population in the world is Israel. The second largest is in New York. There's a rise in anti-Semitism in the United States. I've shown you the graph of the film. There's increased interest in the film that Kyrie Irving promoted as a result of him posting it onto his social media. So meeting with the ADL and Jewish leaders is nothing more than a PR opportunity. It's just so they could take pictures of Kyrie Irving shaking hands with a rabbi. So we could finally put this behind us. Do you think we want to continue talking about this? Do you think I want to continue talking about this? No. The final thing is meeting up with his boss to demonstrate understanding which I think is just a simple conversation with your boss. I don't see anything wrong with that. Is it a bit much? Well, considering the fact that he's done most of this and he also has to do some stuff in order to repair his image and the Brooklyn Nets image, because you have to bear in mind, if the Brooklyn Nets put him out there, pretty much them saying, hey, we're cool with everything that Kyrie Irving's doing. They need to definitely make sure that from a PR perspective, they're covered in order to go back to normal. So from that perspective, I do understand. But then you have LeBron James with a very interesting tweet as well, which I'm kind of shocked because this is kind of like a 180 from what LeBron James said a couple months ago, where he tweeted, I told you guys that I don't believe in sharing hurtful information and I'll continue to be that way. But Kyrie apologized and he should be able to play. That's what I think. It's that simple. Help him learn, but he should be playing. What he's asked to do to get back on the floor is excessive in my opinion. He's not the person that's being portrayed of him. Anyways, back to my rehab session. I want to give a huge shout out to the human being that posted this meme. I love this meme. This is my favorite meme that's currently going viral on NBA Twitter. The minute Kyrie shared that movie, I knew it was going to go downhill. Man, I just had a bad feeling about it. <laughs> the little liar jokes are so good. Here's the thing, man. And I'm not saying these things are the same. A few months
months ago, LeBron James tweeted out, read through the Sarver stories a few times now. I gotta be honest, our league definitely got this wrong. I don't need to explain why. Y'all read the stories and decide for yourself. I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. There is no place in this league for that kind of behavior. I love this league and I deeply respect our leadership, but this isn't right. There's no place for misogyny, sexism, and racism in any workplace. No matter if you own the team or play for the team, we hold our league up as an example of our values and this ain't it. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna get into which is worse, which is better. At the end of the day, this is the way I look at the world. I have a very black and white view of hatred. I think hatred is hatred. I don't look at one form of hatred and rank it over another form of hatred. I see hatred, I say we shouldn't do it. That's it. And in this instance, whether it was intentional or not, a hateful film was promoted, which resulted in significantly more people looking at it. Is that worse than what Robert Sarver did? I'm not gonna get into that because what Robert Sarver did was also pretty freaking bad. So we now have a brand new update on this entire situation. And it's the fact that it looks like Kyrie Irving is actually going to be reinstated. So this is coming to us first from Champs Tranya saying, Joe Tsai announces that he and Clara Tsai met with Kyrie Irving and his family on Thursday and that they do not believe Kyrie Irving has any beliefs of hate towards Jewish people or any group, that the Nets, Irving, the NBA, and the NBA PA will facilitate the process of forgiveness, healing, and education. So I don't necessarily know what this means. I don't know if it means that Kyrie Irving completed his quest or if he just completed part of his quest, but it definitely means he's trending in the right direction. Because if you remember when the original statement came out about Kyrie, there were people that actually thought that Kyrie Irving was never going to play for the Brooklyn Nets ever again. It wouldn't have surprised me to say the least, considering the history between Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets. Now, Joe Tsai actually has a personal tweet about this, where he personally tweeted out that Clara and I met with Kyrie and his family yesterday. We spend quality time to understand each other, and it's clear to me that Kyrie does not have any beliefs of hate towards the Jewish people or any group. The Nets and Kyrie, together with the NBA and NBA PA, are working constructively towards a process of forgiveness, healing, and education. At the end of the day, do I think he went out of his way to insult Jewish people? No, not really. I feel like he just wanted to learn more about his own community and as a result he may have gotten some bad info i don't necessarily think he set out to show hatred towards jewish people but since he's kyrie irving and has the platform that he does even if he accidentally posts an anti-semitic film it could result in a significant increase in anti-semitism that's just part of the responsibility of being a man in kyrie irving's position he holds a lot of influence man and when you hold that type of influence i think it's very important that you're clear and direct with your words with the media. When he had the opportunity to apologize, he probably should have just apologized. Ultimately, I'm really happy to just put this behind us. I really didn't like this part of basketball that I covered over the past couple of weeks, and I'm happy to see it's trending towards a much better direction. I'm looking forward to seeing Kyrie Irving come back to the Brooklyn Nets and covering how much of a dumpster fire that organization is in general. I mean, I'm sorry, but Kyrie Kyrie Irving or no Kyrie Irving, the Brooklyn Nets are just a gigantic dumpster fire. And it's just fun. You can't look away. It's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, like they still have the Ben Simmons problem. Yeah, Jacques Vaughn, who literally said, I guess I was the write-in candidate in the minds of elections right now, but I'm okay with that. I said to my wife, I might have not been her first choice and we've been together 20 years, so it can all work out. So off we go, bro. Have some fun dignity man oh my god anyways that's besides the point man let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below aside from that i'm your boy mike and i'm dropping our mic until our next upload